Our next step is to look at a new interpretation for the derivative. We've reviewed the definition, we've reviewed the interpretation in terms of slope, but our next interpretation is based on asymptotics. And here it is. Are you ready? The derivative is the coefficient of first order variation. What is that? What does that mean? Okay, we're going to think about the derivative in terms of variation of the output. So you got some function f, and you've got an input a. Consider f of a plus h. So what we're going to do is we're going to perturb away from that input slightly by a small amount h. And the question is, what happens to the output? Well, if h were 0, the output would just be f of a. But now we have some additional stuff. That output changes by a certain amount that depends on h. And the question is, what are the asymptotics of this in the limit as h goes to 0? Well, if we were to use the language of big O, we could say that all of that leftover stuff is in big O of h. That is, it goes to 0 as h goes to 0. Well, that's fine, but we can be a bit more precise. We can pull out an explicit first order term, some constant c times h. So we've got that first order term there, and then, well, we have all the other stuff, but we can throw that into a big O trash can. That's all going to be in big O of h squared. Okay, so we got this first order term, then we got all the other stuff, and where are we going with this? Oh yes, the interpretation of the derivative is that it is the coefficient of this first order term, this first order variation in the function's output. So that constant, capital C, that's really just f prime at a, if you like. At which point you say, Hey, wait a minute. Look, this is just the Taylor series thing, but it's all run backwards. And instead of talking about the Taylor series in terms of the derivatives, we're just sort of taking the function, looking at what happens to the asymptotics of the output when we change the input and pulling out that first order term saying whatever that coefficient in front of the first order term is, that's the derivative. Now, I hope at this point you are thinking to yourself, hmm, something's weird here. Something's not quite right. When we began the series, we introduced Taylor series using derivatives to define them, saying here's the definition of a Taylor series, and you remember what derivatives are, right? Right. So just go ahead and use it. And now, now what are we doing? Now we're saying, hey, <laughs> you know all that Taylor series stuff, right? Let's use Taylor series to redefine derivatives. That is totally not cool. That is circular reasoning. This is, this is just a mess. And let's be honest, this is not really a definition of the derivative. It's an interpretation. I'm not claiming that this is a rigorous approach to how to get at the derivative. No, the derivative is the definition in terms of limits. That's the rigorous approach. What we're doing now is just reinterpreting the derivative in terms of variation and asymptotics. And that's not rigorous, but it is useful because in the future we will see... No, no, it's not in the future. It's like right now. From now on, we're going to be using this interpretation to get at things like derivative rules, to get at things like how to make sense of differentials, how to make sense of differential equations, integrals, the fundamental theorem of integral calculus applications, series, convergence, all of it, all of it is going to make sense in terms of asymptotics using this language of big O. Sorry about that. But I'm kind of excited about this stuff. Please work with me on this and you're going to see some really cool 
applications of this different way of thinking about derivatives.